me one place in the federal guidelines <laughs> where you can have 10 machine guns and get one year of community right. service and one year incarcerated. T.I. is in an interrogation room talking. He's snitching. I thought we don't talk to the police. I'm the only one who's not offended by his brass approach, and he's not offended by mine. So, you know, we play rough, but we ain't no, ain't no issue. <clears throat> Uh, it's a mutual respect, though. So, if you know anything about 50 Cent, you'd know it's never a good idea to get on his bad side. T.I. learned this the hard way when 50 Cent started dragging him through the mud over snitching allegations. Show me one place in the federal guidelines <laughs> where you can have 10 machine guns and get one year of community right. service and one year incarcerated. See, in the hip-hop world, snitching is like the ultimate no-no, and T.I. has had this stigma stuck to him for years, leading to a lot of disrespect from peers, including 50 Cent. Initially, T.I. tried to brush off 50 shots by acting indifferent, but things only got worse over time. You're fighting a man with no arms. Expect to get kicked. Nick, do what they can. Just do what they can. More and more people in the industry started calling him out for being a snitch. You would think T.I. would learn not to poke the bear, but nope, he went ahead and challenged 50 Cent to a 20-track battle on the Versus platform. Now, for your birthday, I offer you a challenge, sir. Pull your ass up, man, with 20 of your records, man. This challenge only made 50 Cent pettier because 50 took to Twitter and posted an old video of T.I. from an 08 Crime Stoppers ad. In the video, T.I. is part of an Atlanta news broadcast encouraging people to report crimes, which in the eyes of many is essentially snitching. Hey, what's happening, y'all? Some people call me Till. But this is about another kind of tip that can help our mothers, our sisters, our brothers, and our fathers help get the perpetrators who commit crimes against them off the street. The caption read, Why do you make me do this? This the first song I'ma play, you so tough. And thus began a long, drawn-out beef between the two. What's wild is that these two used to be cool. They even worked together on tracks and everything. Right <laughs> They've both done well for themselves, too. Over the years, T.I. has become one of the most successful rappers in the industry. He's amassed a significant net worth through various ventures, had top 10 Billboard Hot 100 hits like Big Things Poppin', and even a number one hit with Live Your Life featuring Rihanna. T.I. also has three Grammys to his name, solidifying his status in the industry. Rap, best rap solo performance, T.I. How you doing? Thank you. But T.I.'s success does not stop at music. He's involved in various business ventures, including his own record label, Grand Hustle Records, which he founded in 2003. He's invested in several other businesses too, like the clothing line Aku and the social media app Yoptima. T.I. has even authored two books, Power and Beauty and Trouble and Triumph. But despite all these achievements, a lot of people, including 50 Cent, still don't have any respect or regard for him because of the snitching allegations. And it's not just old news either. Back in August 2020, during an interview with TMZ, Power Book 2 ghost stars Michael Rainey Jr. and Gianni Paolo talked about working on the show, 50 Cent's involvement, and more. Paolo mentioned he'd heard rumors that T.I. was up for the role of Davis McLean before it eventually went to Method Man, supposedly because of the beef between 50 Cent and T.I. I heard T.I. was supposed to play um, Method Man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No yeah. way. And then I don't know if there was a beef or something happened, but then he never wound up playing and then Method was Davis McLean. Even though T.I. later debunked this, people still think there might be some truth to it. Never, that's not true. 50 and I, uh, we were executive producers on a different show mm. outside of the Power Universe. Um, but nah, man, me and 50 cool. So how did T.I. get this snitching stigma that's made folks like 50 Cent keep their distance? Let's take a trip down memory lane. T.I. has had his fair share of run-ins with the law. We're talking about charges related to drugs, weapons, and even a but there's one particular incident that really made the snitch label stick to him. It all went down in 2007, right before he was supposed to perform at the Bet Hip Hop Awards in Atlanta. Just hours before his performance, the FBI and a whole bunch of police officers swooped in 
Jackson and arrested him. They found that he had 12 machine guns on him and two of them even had silencers. Now, if you're a previously convicted felon, getting caught with guns is a massive problem. And here was T.I., a felon with a dozen machine guns. Naturally, everyone was wondering how T.I. was going to get out of this mess without serving a ton of time. On October 26, 2007, T.I. walked out of the United States District Court in Atlanta after showing up before U.S. Magistrate Judge Alan J. Baverman. He posted a whopping $3 million bond, $2 million in cash, plus equity on his property. The terms were strict. He had to stay at home except for medical appointments and court appearances. The only people allowed to live with him were his girlfriend and children, and any visitors needed court approval. T.I.'s suppression hearing was set for February 19, 2008. He eventually pled guilty to U.S. federal weapons charges and was sentenced to an indefinite prison term, a year of house arrest, and 1,500 hours of community service. In an interview with MTV about serving prison time, T.I. said, presumably, while I'm there, I'll be able to strategize my comeback. He made it clear he wasn't planning on just sitting around doing nothing. On March 27, 2009, U.S. District Judge Charles A. Panel Jr. sentenced him to one year and one day in prison and ordered him to pay $100,300 in fines. T.I. managed to get his sentence reduced from a potential maximum of 10 years and $250,000 fine through a plea bargain. Now, to a lot of people, this just didn't add up. Take Lil Wayne, for example. They found a firearm on him, just a pistol, in New York, and he got sentenced to a year in prison for that. Sure, New York laws are way stricter than Atlanta laws when it comes to firearms, but still T.I. getting found with 12 machine guns and only getting a year? That's wild especially for a convicted felon. Even if you have loads of money to get the best lawyers, it's still a stretch to think you could wiggle out of that kind of trouble so easily. This is why many people started saying he must have snitched on others to get a lighter sentence. A lot of his peers threw these accusations his way, including 50 Cent, which sparked a beef between them. It all kicked off when 50 Cent addressed T.I.'s alleged snitching on G-Unit's second album, T.O.S. Terminate On Sight. There's a track on there called You So Tough where 50 took some jabs, but not directly. Now, 50 is known for calling people out by name without a second thought, but this time he kept it vague. He dropped lines that seemed to hit close to home for T.I., and naturally people made the connection. In the verse, 50 says, What's today's mathematics? Ish ain't adding up. Get knocked with 10 machine guns, only get 12 months. Ooh wee, don't talk to me, you talk to him, you talking to them. I got the best lawyers money can buy. They said they would have got me 10 or maybe 9. I said, how do you explain how homie breathes? They said, keep your mouth shut or you're eating the cheese. I got the best lawyers money can buy. They said it would have got me 10 or maybe 9. I said, well, how do you explain how homie breeze? said, you keep your mouth shut or you eat, eat the, the cheese. cheese. You so tough. After that verse dropped, everyone started speculating it was about T.I., expecting a beef to erupt. MTV even asked 50 about it, and he played it cool, saying he's direct when he goes at artists and that he was just asking a question. He basically left it up to the public to decide if they wanted to make it about T.I. If I had an issue, when have you known me to be indirect? What an issue. Oh, you're pretty direct. Right, so if I had a problem with any artist, trust me, they would know. Is that line about T.I.? Absolutely for the public to decide. T.I. later addressed the whole thing in his own interview, but kind of brushed it off, and honestly, it made sense. At that time, the police had T.I. under a microscope, watching his every move. Starting a beef with another rapper would have been the last thing he needed. To a conclusion. And when I heard him speaking on it, he said he wasn't talking about me, you know what I'm saying? He, and me and 50 always had a decent rapport, you know? It wasn't never nothing negative. At the same time, he said, man, he, he's never had a problem with saying people's names when he's speaking on them. And I, like, that's not like 50. If he going at somebody, he usually say their name and make it known. It's usually not ever a whether or not. That was pretty much the extent of their beef potential. Surprisingly, they actually went on to work together, jumping on tracks, and everything seemed cool. Fast forward to 2020, T.I. stirred things up again by calling out 50 Cent to a friendly 20-track battle on Instagram Live through the Versus platform. For those of you who don't know, Versus was created during the quarantine as a way for artists to go head-to-head -head and see who has the best tracks. It didn't matter if you were a producer or an artist, it was all about showcasing your catalog. So during 50 Cent's birthday week, T.I. decided to stir the pot by challenging 50 to a 20-track battle. T.I. wanted to see who had the better music and catalog. He even poked fun at 50, saying since Kanye West beat him in their sales battle back in the day, 50 might not take up the challenge. For your birthday, I offer you a challenge, sir. Pull your up, man, with 20 of your records, man. You know what I'm saying? But I understand if you don't want to answer to that challenge, because last time you got challenged, Kanye West dusted your ass off. So, hmm, you might not want to do that. So, hmm, huh, well, guess who ain't scared of your
At first, fans thought T.I. was just joking around, but things quickly escalated. After posting the initial video, T.I. doubled down by posting another video where he was on the phone with Kevin Hart, who shares the same birthday as 50. Please tell 50 to bring his ass on out here and get this smoke. Oh, Jesus. Please tell 50 Cent, get his hit records. And come on and sit down. Naturally, what T.I. said made headlines, and 50 responded by posting one of the articles with the caption, Yo, somebody passed T.I. the weed they gave Smokey and Friday, lol. T.I. wasn't about to let that slide. He fired back with another Instagram video saying 50 acknowledged his challenge but didn't want to accept it. And he acknowledged that he received a message. He ain't said nothing about accepting that challenge, though. All the comment talking about, oh man, 50 gon' did it, man. I mean, y'all scared of that, not me. Somebody with 50 gon' goddamn do. Man, shut your scared up. Get the out of the way and let me handle this. The next morning, T.I. kept the momentum going with more videos explaining how he tried to fly out to 50 Cent's birthday party to show some love and talk things over. However, one of T.I.'s homies called and told him it wasn't a good idea because Tony Yayo had a problem with T.I. This led to T.I. and his friend going live on Instagram to discuss the situation. Where you, were the, where you was at last night? In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, in Brooklyn doing what? Doing 50 cent party, had a great time. Told me on the way, you got the jet already gassed up. I said, don't come. Yeah. I said, don't what come. You say? I said, don't you come. Say what? Boy, when I tell you that boy, that boy, yeah, yo, he, got a, he either got a real problem, some type of way, man. You ask me, you got some type of problem. Tony Yayo didn't stay quiet either. He jumped into the comments, accusing T.I. of clout chasing. Then things took a more personal turn. The next morning, 50 Cent took to Twitter and posted a video of T.I. on Crime Stoppers from back in 08. In the video, T.I. is part of an Atlanta news broadcast encouraging people to report crimes, which is essentially snitching. The caption read, Why do you make me do this? This is the first song I'ma play you so tough. T.I. saw this and was not happy. He reposted it on his Instagram. Instagram with a lengthy caption, clearly annoyed by 50's move. Quote, I'll take this as an acceptance of this catalog challenge. He says, we got him, he bit the bait, set this ish up so I can finally shut this watermelon head invisible neck guy up once and for all. As far as this clip goes, it's cute, old, outdated, and in poor taste, much like your catalog, 50 Cent. However, I prefer facts, and the fact remains, I have never given any information to any form of law enforcement at any time in life to get anybody any time for any crime. Supreme told me to ask 50 Cent if he can say the same? Well, that's all I have to say about that, so let's set this date and select your songs off that one hot album you got, and let's lay your little overrated, outdated, steroid-inflated ass catalog to rest. R.I.P. to 50 Cent catalogs, I seen you bully all them guys for years, not the king though. Despite the persistent snitching accusations, no concrete evidence has ever surfaced to prove T.I. actually snitched. In fact, T.I. has always been outspoken against snitches. He even kicked an artist off his Grand Hustle label after after discovering the rapper was a DEA informant. Alpha Mega, who signed with T.I. in the mid-2000s, seemed to bring street cred with him. T.I. showcased him on the 2007 single Hurt with Busta Rhymes, but things fell apart by the end of the decade. In 2009, the smoking gun exposed Alpha Mega for working with law enforcement after he was sentenced to 110 months behind bars for federal gun charges in September 95. T.I. wasted no time dropping Alpha Mega from Grand Hustle. He explained his decision in an interview on Atlanta radio station Hot 107.9 stating, quote, Even though all our artists and employees are asked by us to be honest and open about their past history, at no time did Alpha disclose to me or Grand Hustle what has now appeared in the media. He essentially deceived us by failing to fully disclose the truth about his past, and there is no place in our organization for dishonest and misleading behavior. T.I. added, quote, As I have always said, you must take responsibility for your own actions. We at Grand Hustle cannot support or condone the blaming of others for our own mistakes. I hope and pray to God, bless his savings plans, but I don't foresee me or my company playing a role in his personal or professional business. However, T.I. later shot himself in the foot by admitting he once snitched on his dead cousin to avoid jail time. In a resurfaced clip from an August 2020 episode of his Expeditiously podcast, the Atlanta rapper recalled pinning a gun case on his late relative Toot in the early 2000s, before his music career took off. T.I. explained that he and Toot were running a hustle in their native Atlanta involving stolen upscale clothes 
close when they were pulled over by cops who discovered a gun in T.I.'s possession. Quote, we were at Lennox Mall parking lot unloading the truck of stolen clothes. I'm talking to the man while making the play, he remembered. This guy's looking at everything like, man, y'all got, y'all got? Mother F, we done said what you want. Get this ish and go. And right then, mall security pulled up. We got in the car and pulled off and of course, they followed behind us and called the real police. So before we actually got on the expressway, the real police pulled us over. I had a gun. Two who introduced T.I. to DJ Toomp, the producer behind hits like What You Know, 24s, and You Don't Know Me, was murdered during the court case. At the urging of his lawyer and with Toot's posthumous blessing, T.I. avoided incarceration by claiming the gun belonged to his cousin. Quote, we caught those gun cases, Toot died, my lawyer said, well, you know, I could make everything go away if it was Toot's, it was Tremel's, T.I. recalled. After he had passed, I had a talk with him. Toot said, I'll take all the charges you got. If you can walk away free and put it on me, goddamn right cause I'll be damned if they gonna come and mother effin' extradite me from here. If it was Tremel's, and I had a talk with Toot. And what Toot said? Posthumously? Yeah, 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 after he had passed. After he had passed, I had a talk with him. What Toot said? If you could walk away free and put it on me, goddamn right. Cause I'd be damned if they gonna come and mother and extradite me from here. <laughs> when gun rights activist Nikki Daniels Jr., a guest on the podcast, asked if that's where the allegations of T.I. being a snitch stem from, he replied, hell nah, don't nobody know about that, I just volunteered this information. That's the only time I done ever said or gave information because that's my big cousin, he was dead, and he told me that it was okay. But you know what? Despite all the drama and the snitching allegations, T.I. is still considered a major icon in the hip-hop industry. You can't talk about the evolution of hip-hop, especially trap music, without getting giving T.I. his due credit. Alongside fellow Georgia-based rappers Jeezy and Gucci Mane, T.I. is recognized as one of the pioneers of the trap music subgenre. T.I.'s journey in the music industry kicked off when he got acquainted with local music executive Kwan K.P. Prather. By the late 1990s, he had joined Prather's company, Get O Vision Entertainment. This move eventually led to him signing a major label record deal with La Face Records, an imprint of Arista Records, in 1999. His debut studio album, I'm Serious 2001, didn't exactly set the world on fire, receiving a lukewarm response both critically and commercially. It turned out to be his only release with LaFace Records. But T.I. was not about to let that slow him down. He signed with Atlantic Records, where he hit his mainstream breakthrough. By 2003, he had co-founded his own label imprint, Grand Hustle Records. This was a game changer. T.I., a three-time Grammy Award winner, became a leading figure in hip-hop and southern hip-hop during the 2000s. Over his career, he has racked up 19 Grammy nominations, along along with 12 Billboard Music Awards, 3 BET Awards, and 2 American Music Awards. Prominent industry artists have also signed with T.I. through his Grand Hustle Records label adding to his legacy. Artists like Travis Scott, B.O.B., and Iggy Azalea have all been part of the Grand Hustle family. T.I. hasn't just made his mark in music, he's also built quite an acting career. He starred in films like ATL, Takers, Get Hard, and Identity Thief. Plus, he made appearances in the Marvel Cinematic Universe films Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. On top of that, T.I. has been a reality TV star, featuring in shows like T.I.'s Road to Redemption, T.I. and Tiny, The Family Hustle, and The Grand Hustle. And let's not forget, he's a published author too, with two novels under his belt, Power and Beauty 2011, and Trouble and Triumph 2012. By the end of the 2000s, Billboard ranked him as the 27th best artist of the decade. Sure, T.I. may have lost some respect from his peers due to those snitching allegations, but he's still got his fans, and he's definitely doing well for himself.